Hello everyone, Chaos here, and welcome to another old-school RuneScape video brought to you by Surfshark. We all want a 99 in the game, right? Whether it be your favorite skill, a 99 to flex on your friends, or simply because it matches your fashionscape and you want to look cool in a 2007 version of a 2001 point-and-click browser game for children. Whatever the case, skill capes come with nifty passive effects that make them useful not only when training their respective skill, but because they can be interacted with for a handy teleport or to get an item from them. In today's video, we will go over every single skill cape and ranking them in four different categories according to how useful they are. I've actually made a video like this in the past that is now over two years old, so I think it would be the perfect time to improve it, and to add even more, I will even suggest improvements to some of the capes, because to be quite honest with you, some effects are just depressing. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing with notifications on, drop a cheeky like, and you can come to this channel every day of the week except the Thursdays and Sundays to catch our live streams and interact with this amazing community. The only disclaimer I have for this video is that the ranking you're about to see is mostly based on personal opinion and how each skill cape performs after 99. If you want to max, there will be certainly at least one skill you won't even touch post 99, which pretty much defeats the purpose of the skill cape. If you disagree with the placement of a skill cape or the buff I propose, let me know in the comments below, and if you do so, stay tuned for a bombed giveaway at the end. So, let's begin. The four categories I mentioned are as follows. From bottom to top tier, we have skill capes that are mostly useless because their effect is heavily outclassed. Next, we have capes you may keep for useful teleports and effects, or a little bit of use post-99. We then have skill capes worth keeping in the bank, and almost always used when training the skill. Finally, in the top tier, we have capes you must always keep in the bank for their overall use, or that have a very powerful passive effect. Alright, we are going to start with attack, which is, without a shadow of a doubt, the most useless skill cape in the entire game. And you might only see people wearing it for fashionscape. Attack allows you to stay in the Cyclops rooms at the Warriors Guild indefinitely, as long as you're wearing it. And after you get a Dragon Defender, you will only come back here if you lose the Defender by some freak accident. I can't stress enough how useless this effect actually is. To make it better, it could guarantee a minimum hit that isn't a zero. This could work great for items that need an accuracy check to unleash their effects, such as a Dragon War Hammer or all the available Godswords. This might sound a little bit too broken in certain situations, but if this ever happens, think of how many people would actually bring an attack cape switch to land their specials on raids or bossing. Related to combat, we have the defense cape next. And I know, I know, hardcore Iron Man are disliking the video already, because the defense cape features the passive effect of a ring of life. When brought below 10% of your maximum health, the cape will automatically teleport you to your respawn and save your life. This effect isn't terrible, but to be quite honest, for a main account, it can actually be a little bit inconvenient if you forget to turn it off. This doesn't have anything to do with that one time when I was on a Krill task, and after being taken to like 5 HP, I was teleported out one or two hits away from finishing my Slayer task. For it to see more use, it could have heavily increased the defensive stats, so people would actually take it when tanking at places like Bandos or Zami God Wars Dungeon. One of my personal bottom tier capes definitely has to be Agility. This one has two effects. The first one is that it acts as a graceful cape, and the second one is that once per day, you can interact with it to get 100% energy back, as well as giving you the effect of a stamina potion for just one minute. On paper, this doesn't sound bad, and you will be wearing it every time you put on full graceful, but hear me out. I mean, you're supposed to be a master of agility, so please tell me why do I still fail obstacles whenever I have it on? This becomes an absolute nightmare at, for example, the Elven Forest, where I swear to god I fail the tripwire trap like 80% of the time when traveling around when doing clue scrolls. Jagex, for the love of everything you find holy, please make it so wearing the agility cape you're guaranteed to skip over every single obstacle. Up next we have the security cape, which is obtained by training online security. And for that we have today's video sponsor, Surfshark. Some of you may value your RuneScape account way too much. Probably more than, let's say, your dog or your wife. For the record, that is definitely not me. Surfshark offers online protection by encrypting all your information sent between your devices and the internet so nobody can spy on you. 
Not only that, but one of their additional services is a hefty antivirus, which will keep your devices clean at all times. One of the most convenient features allows you to change your device location to pretty much anywhere in the world in case you are trying to access content that isn't available in your country. Their clean web feature will also provide solid browsing security by warning you of any phishing websites or malware if you accidentally click on any sketchy link. If any of this sounds like the perfect Christmas gift for yourself, Surfshark is hooking you up to 6 months of protection for free. Go to surfshark.deals slash chaososrs or click the links in the description or the pinned comment to get started on improving your online safety. Once again, thank you very much to Surfshark for sponsoring this video, and let's continue. The woodcutting cape also falls in this category, and I'll be honest, it mostly has to do with my raging hate for the gathering skill. When wearing it, you have 10% increased the chance of getting bird nests as you chop trees. If you have a 99 woodcutting, chances are you are doing redwoods for AFK experience or the pet, so this effect is both useless and inconvenient because it's just going to use up one inventory space. Thanks to forestry, it would be a little trickier to add a new passive effect to the skill cape or completely rework it, as prior to this update, I thought of simply giving you a better chance for trees not to deplete would be enough. Nowadays though, you could potentially combine the forestry kit with your cape, and maybe give it a chance to save items whenever you summon an event, or probably just get a little more anima bark when engaging with forestry. Opposite to woodcutting, we have fire making. And I know, again, Iron Man are also probably about to dislike this video, because this is likely one of, if not your first and 99 on the account. The first effect is that it serves as an inextinguishable light source for dark areas, and two, it counts as warm clothing for winter tone. If you have a 99, chances are you already have enough pieces of warm clothing, and with a bullseye lantern, this cape is actually pretty bad. In my personal opinion, the fire making is the most useless skill in the entire game, so it's difficult to think of a useful skill cape perk that works post 99. But if you want to go for more experience, maybe making it so your actions are not interrupted or winter toad, or maybe with the newest addition in the game in the form of bonfires, adding logs to a fire could give you 50% experience per log instead of 33%. The last cape in this category is fletching, and this would be lower on the list, but quite frankly, the previous ones are absolutely ridiculous. You can interact with the skill cape three times per day to obtain a bronze crossbow and a mithril grapple. If you ask me, the only way to use these would be for Armadil, because grappling shortcuts are quite literally dead content in the game, excluding that one achievement diary task for Lumbridge in the Dorgasun area. A way to quote unquote fix the skill cape that doesn't involve a boosting experience would be to be able to craft arrows, bolts, or add gem tips to bolts in larger quantities. Currently, you may only do 10 actions per cycle, so for activities like making arrows, for example, you can only make 150 before stopping. We could bump it up to 20 or 30 actions, and making it less tedious for both main and Ironman accounts alike. We start the next category with the Strength Cape. This does absolutely nothing other than teleporting you to the Warrior's Guild. It's actually not bad for Ironman or Ultimate Ironman accounts who access the food shop frequently before going back to Slayer. For main accounts though, this cape is definitely the one you should skip on, unless it's your only 99 in the game and you want extra defensive stats. The only capes in the game which provide strength bonuses are the Infernal Cape with 8, the Fire Cape with 4, and the Mythical Cape with 1. It would be pretty cool to buff the Mythical Cape to have a plus 3 strength bonus, and maybe give the Strength Cape a plus 2 or even a plus 1. I mean, you're supposed to be pretty strong, right? The Teleport to the Warrior's Guild is pretty cool for clue scrolls, so I'm a big fan of that one. Sadly enough, the Hunter Cape is literally the same as Strength. A completely useless skill cape when it comes to a passive effect, and the only reason why it's higher on the list is because it has two teleports instead of one. This will teleport you to the private Chinchampa hunting grounds in Feldib Hills, and also the Black Chinchampa area all the way up in the wilderness. I love the first teleport because of clue scrolls, and the wildy one is actually kinda niche. With the new Hunter Guild coming along the release of Valamore in early 2024, the Hunter Cape could act like the Slayer one. Give you a chance of repeating your previous Hunter contract, or maybe things like providing a higher chance to obtain the Hunter material you are looking for when carrying out said contract. It's obviously a little trickier to buff an item based on the future content, but the Hunter Cape definitely needs some love. Fishing is quite literally the same as Strength and Hunter. This is also a skill I absolutely hate along with woodcutting because gathering skills are actually pretty cringe. But when you achieve level 99, the fishing cape provides unlimited teleports to both the fishing guild and Otto's Grotto. 
After 99 fishing you will see literally no use for the cape, but again, I like it a lot because of the teleports are super convenient for glue scrolls. A way to buff up the cape would be to give it the passive effect of spirit flakes in a smaller capacity as to not to devalue said item coming from Temporos. It could be a slight percentage of catching two fish instead of one, or maybe just increase the catch rate of slow fishing spots like sharks, anglerfish, sacred eels, and infernal eels. I mean, resources are coming into the game in insane numbers thanks to bots and PBMing, so I don't really think it will hurt too much. The Herblower Cape has three cool passive effects. An NPC Ignarda will make unfinished potions for 200 GP each without a hard desert diary. You can make unfinished potions with grimy herbs and get the experience as if you cleaned the herb. And finally, you can interact with it to receive a pestle and mortar. Sadly, all of these are pretty useless, especially because Herblore is not a skill you will train past 99 traditionally because of its high cost. I can tell you I have never used any of its effects. An extremely simple solution to buff up this cape would be to give it the effect of the Amulet of Chemistry. When wearing the cape, you have a chance to make a 4-dose potions instead of a 3-dose potion. Or maybe we can take a page out of leagues and we could have a small chance of saving a secondary ingredient when making potions. These resources don't really saturate the market and would be a pretty cool incentive to wear the cape. Magic can be one of the quickest or most chill 99s in the game, and the cape effect is extremely nice. By interacting with it, you can swap between spellbooks up to 5 times per day. It's great if you forgot to change them when bouncing from one PVM activity to another. If you have an occult altar in your POH, this is not going to be as useful, and of course having a limited number of switches can be quite limiting. An obvious buff to the cape would be giving it unlimited spellbook swaps, but maybe keep them at 5 if you change them in the wildy, otherwise people like Torvesta would run rampant teleblocking and freezing you for a video. Either that, or a small buff to the offensive capabilities, like the one proposed for strength, and maybe give it a 1% magic damage bonus, as well as a few magic offensive stats. Mining is one of the more useful capes in this category, but again, being a perk you can only use post-99 kinda defeats the purpose. When wearing it, you have a 5% chance of receiving an extra ore up to adamant, and it stacks with a rock armor. If you have a 99, there's a big chance you won't be doing a lot of mining outside of Amethyst, the Mother Load Mine, and shooting stars for AFK experience, so this one feels just a little bit underwhelming. For us to have an incentive to wear the cape opposed to 99 for some chill gains, the effect could be increased to give us a chance of extra resources for every single rock in the game. I mean, with PVM drops injecting ore into the game at an obscene rate, I pretty much doubt that the buff will bring a negative effect on the market. Either that, or make the cape work along the expert mining gloves and increase the chance of rocks not depleting and continue mining. The final cape in this category is smithing, and it has two nice effects. When wearing it, you may store 36 coal in your coal bag instead of the original 27. And second, it acts as goldsmith gauntlets to give you that nice experience bonus when smelting gold ore. This is the highest cape in the category because it helps for both experience and the profit per hour by using at a blast furnace at the cost of your graceful cape. To be honest, this starts to fall in the realm of not really needing a buff, which we will see with the upcoming capes, but if we really want to give it a little bit of love, we could make it so wearing when smithing items at an anvil has a small chance of either saving one bar or an even smaller chance of giving you an extra item when doing so. This would give you a bit of extra profit to make it work outside the Blast Furnace. The next category is for capes you should definitely wear when training, and we start with Thieving. It gives you an additional 10% chance of successfully pickpocketing NPCs, and it also stacks with a medium and a hard RD diary. This is useful post-99 experience when training at, let's say, the Tazar area, but most importantly will be a huge boost for people looking for blood shards and crystal seeds when pickpocketing Vyres and Elves respectively. The cape also has an extremely niche use for quicker challenge mode chambers, as a level boost can help a little bit on the thieving room. A nice buff to it would be providing one or two teleports to important training areas, even though you can already reach these places rather quickly. Or maybe make it like the smithing cape so when wearing it, the cape works as a rogue's gloves so you can wear ice gloves when pickpocketing to Zars. We all love a little bit of Slayer, right? In fact, I bet a lot of you know what the perk of this cape actually is. When wearing it, or even when it's in your inventory, after you're done with a task, you have a 10% chance of receiving the same target when talking to a Slayer Master. This becomes especially useful when hunting for a unique from a boss you can do on a Slayer task, or even boss-specific tasks you can try your luck at some great loot. I will take a page out of leagues once again, and how cool would it be to have the ability to choose your task once per day, excluding maybe Jad and Zuck. This is basically the unnatural selection relic from leagues 2, and I hope to see it return for leagues 4 as of the time of making this video. 
it would be an insanely nice incentive to reach level 99, because at this level, you're pretty much looking for extra profit. The hit points cape sounds a little underpowered on paper, but it's a great item to take to places where you need a little bit of HP regeneration. The effect makes it so your HP heals twice as fast, and it even stacks with a region bracelet to recover HP at 4 times the normal rate. However, it doesn't stack with Rapid Heal, because 80 times HP regeneration sounds a little bit bonkers. A simple buff to the cape has to do with food, of course. When wearing it, food could heal you for even more depending on what you are eating. At level 99 you should already have high stats to stick with high level food like sharks and anglerfish, so why not bump these two to 22 and the 24 respectively. On the other hand, we could make it so when wearing it, your max HP goes to anywhere between 102 and 105 for higher healing. When wearing the prior cape, it acts as a holy wrench. And what does a holy wrench do exactly? When in your inventory, you gain extra prayer points when sipping on prayer potions, super restores, and sand view serums. The formula for this is honestly a little weird, but you won't gain more than 2 extra prayer points per dose of your potion. This is a great cape if you are AFKing with a prayer enhancing gear for your Slayer trips. To incentivize the use of the cape, it could inherit the effects of a Bone Crusher and Ash Sanctifier, granted you have them in the bank, and of course have charges to make use of their effect. Either that, or it could have a chance to save charges of said items when you have them in your inventory. And with this effect, I would definitely bring it to my AFK Slayer trips, I can do by just camping protection prayers. By far the easiest skill in the entire game features a perk that sounds extremely bland on paper. When wearing the cooking cape, you will never burn food anywhere in the game. Like, even if you cook an anglerfish at a fire made with fire making. Your success rate will always stay at 100%. As I'm writing this script, I am cooking anglerfish at the mid's guild, so I can vouch for this one, as I always wear my max cape for some AFK chill games. I might trigger a few people with this proposed buff, but in RuneScape 3, there's something called a portable range to cook near a bank. One of the effects make it so you have a 5% chance of doubling your cooked food, so if we're talking about a small addition to the cooking cape, it could copy this ability and provide a small chance of doubling food when cooking, and could definitely come in handy for more profit per hour. Being 100% biased here because runecrafting is my favorite skill in the game, but this cape is absolutely insane when we are talking post-99. When wearing it, you don't need a talisman when entering a runecrafting altar, and your pouches will never degrade. I can't stress enough how great this perk is if you're looking for extra profit through the skill, or by playing the best minigame in the history of old school runescape, Guardians of the Rift. I like the skill in the cape so much that this would be the first instance of me saying that these perks honestly make the cape extremely good. But if I could add anything else to it, maybe give it a certain number of teleports to runecrafting altars every day. It would need a cap to avoid giving people insane XP and profit per hour, but teleports to each of the altars would be extremely useful for clue scrolls or overall traveling. In the last category we have 4 capes you should always keep in the bank, and use whenever training their respective skill. We start with ranged, and if you attach a Vorkat's head to it, it's going to act as a novice assembler. The only difference is that you keep the stats of the skill cape, and not the offensive stats of the assembler. Honestly, you lose on like just one max hit, and the prayer bonus from the skill cape is more useful in a lot of places like Hydra, the God Wars dungeon, and much more. I think the ranged cape is in a pretty good spot, so maybe just giving it unlimited teleports to the ranged guild would be more than enough. Giving it even higher chance of saving ammunition to make it more competitive with the assembler sounds a little weird, but with a new best in slot ranged cape coming in the game soon with the release of Valamore, we will just have to wait and see how ranged cape could be buffed. Up next we have crafting, and it sits here because it has two simple functions. It provides unlimited teleports to the crafting guild, which, at the time of making this video, is arguably the best to teleport near a bank. And two, because you can use the bank without the need of the hard Falador diary. Both are great and definitely worth the investment to get to level 99 crafting, no matter how expensive it is. I can think of two buffs to this cape, which is, make it so if you have the cape in the bank, you can enter the crafting guild if you accidentally leave and you don't have a brown apron with you. And two, make it count as unlimited thread when wearing it, so we can finally make 7 dragonhide bodies per inventory. Either that, or being able to store one mold in the cape to act as if you have it in the inventory to make jewelry, for example. The runner-up spot belongs to the farming cape, and as long as you go on farm runs for either profit as a main account or experience as an Iron Man, this is an item you will always have on your back 100% of the time. It gives increased the chance at more crops from herb patches, and it even stacks with the magic secateurs. 
It also provides unlimited teleport to the farming guild, which is also near a bank. The only thing I can think of when buffing this already powerful cape would be to maybe give it an option for you to be able to harvest clean herbs and give you the respective herbal experience when doing so. Some people may rather keep their grimy herbs because they're more expensive, and this would only save a few seconds for players who already plan to make their own potions when harvesting herbs. The best cape in the game is construction, and level 99 is well worth the investment. The cape doesn't have any passive effects, but it provides unlimited teleports to your POH, as well as every POH portal in the game, which goes up to 9 including the POH portal where your house is located. I have like 20 plus bank tabs and every single one of them has my construction cape for that one click teleport to my house. I'll just say that I love this cape so much that I don't really have a single proposed to change to it. It already has insane utility so giving it an effect for more experience or even chances at saving resources just doesn't sound fair. It could however give you the chance of having a butler in your house without the need of building two rooms. Whenever I make a video related to construction, I always have to do this, and it gets a little annoying. Ladies and gentlemen, we come to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching and for making it this far. If you did, leave a comment below with a potential buff for any skill cape to see how creative you get. If you do so, include the term RSN along with your RuneScape name so I can pick a random winner on Friday, and we will meet up to give you a RuneScape bond. I want to give a massive and girthy thank you to all the channel members. Your support goes a long way, and my family and I cannot thank you enough for it. If you would like to support this channel further, click the join button below to subscribe monetarily, and receive a ton of cool perks in the videos, in the live streams, and of course in the Discord. Stay tuned for the next video, which will be the last one of 2023, as we take a look back at the most important updates of the year, and ask the important question, is old school RuneScape worth playing in 2024? For now, have an amazing day, have an amazing week, and I will see you then. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Peace!